I'd like to call this meeting of the School District of Baraboo Board of Education to order for Monday, August the 10th, 2015 with roll call. Mr. Cummings? Here. Mr. McNevin? Here. Mr. Meering? Here. Mr. Mortimer? Here. Ms. Riley? Here. Mr. Vedro? Here. And Bodak here. Continue with the pledge. The flag's behind the counter by the clock. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would entertain a motion for the approval of the board minutes of the last July the 27th, 2015 meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Riley, seconded by Cummings. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Those abstaining? Abstain. <laughs> Minutes thus approved brings us to correspondence. I have none. I also was not made aware of any administrative correspondence. I understand Mr. Mearing has something to share. Yeah, I, I got um, a correspondence from Senator Tammy Baldwin on the uh, Education and Secondary, uh, Elementary and Secondary Education Act. And um, and that's commonly known as No Child Left Behind. Hopefully there, that name will be left behind too. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, it has. There has been one bill that has passed in the Senate, and another one that has passed in the House, and um, it's currently going to be hopefully reconciled. Uh, the two houses have to, or the two uh, branches have to agree before it can advance. Um, and um, and she will try to keep abreast and do things that will be a, a benefit to public education. So that's basically what the gist of the letter was. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, any other correspondence administrative that I missed? Hearing none, I'd like to move to public viewpoints. Is there anyone here for public viewpoints tonight? Any public viewpoints? Any public viewpoints? Hearing none, I'd like to do a brief agenda adjustment under continuous <coughs> school improvement. Uh, we have listed the 2015 ACT results. Um, we have been informed by the DPI that that data that data is not available to release to the public at this time. It's not something that was specific to Baraboo, but they need to make sure that all the information is validated before it can be shared with the public. So we will return to that as an agenda item in the future. So for now, when we come to that, there will be nothing to report from Ms. McMahon. So that having been said, we're at the portion of the agenda for the staff student community recognition. And we have with us tonight from the maintenance department, Mr. O'Brien, and we'd like to recognize a few of his employees, and I'm going to turn it over to him for that part of the show. Part of the show. <laughs> uh, it's just kind of weird with the setup here to be talking to people's backs, but um, I'd just like to start by thanking um, you, the board, um, Lori, Jeff, as administrators for giving us the opportunity to stand in front of you and uh, be recognized for the work that we do over the course of the summer or the whole year. Um, but for this one, it's really for the summer. Um, our department's basically made up of three different groups for the course of the summer. We have our summer helpers, custodial staff, and then the maintenance department. We bring uh, summer helpers in mid-May um, to help us get ready for the summer, help us knock out some work tickets before we get going. Um, we have juniors and seniors from the high school. We have people that went to school here and have gone on to college and come back for the summer to try to you know, earn the money for their education. We have staff members, we have assistants that come to work for us during the time of the year. We have food service that comes in. We have a teacher from uh, West Kindergarten Center that came and helped this summer. So we have a pretty group, big group of people that come in to help us you know, try to obtain the goal of getting our schools ready for September. Then we have our custodial staff. Um, they do an outstanding job. This year it's a little bit different with all the construction, as you can imagine. Um, in the past, we've kind of team cleaned, so we'd go from, send a big group of people in and just do a building in three or four weeks, go to the next building. This year we kept everybody at the same building, so it's kind of different in their own building. Um, with the number of construction guys that are gonna be in there, um, we just wanted our staff to be in their building, kind of keep an eye on them a little bit too. Um, they've done an outstanding job. They've gone into classrooms and cleaned, come out only to see somebody go back in in the afternoon and say, shoot, there it goes. And then they're back cleaning it again. So I mean, we've cleaned the rooms over and over again. They've done it without complaining. Um, they know what the end goal is. Um, taking on responsibility of taking 
ownership of their building. I think when it comes September, when um, you know some of the principals that are here, they can probably account for the mess that's taken, that their buildings do look like and what it's gonna look like come September. You know, that's really a, a result of what these guys have done. Um, and there's our maintenance staff that, you know, really for the summer projects, trying to get caught up on work tickets, as well as being partners with um, C.G. Schmidt and their subcontractors. Um, <coughs> literally every single day, a contractor in some shape or form is coming to our guys in the maintenance department asking questions about where locations are and just different stuff that we have going on. Keeping it on schedule, having those guys have the intimate knowledge of our buildings and as much knowledge as they have of our buildings has really been valuable to them for keeping us on schedule. Um, Again, I'd just like to thank you guys for giving us a chance to be recognized tonight. They've done an outstanding job. Um, Christine, she keeps me going. <laughs> keeps me sane, and whenever I start going off track a little bit or when I start getting ahead of myself, she'll bring me back in. So um, collectively, we just got a great custodial maintenance department, and, and uh, the summer helpers this year were valuable. Um, we're looking forward to turning the keys over to the administrators and then their staff this year. So that come September, we can uh, have a, a safe and healthy and clean um, work environment for everybody, as well as uh, a successful project. So really, it's it's them guys that have done all the hard work. So I'd just like to thank them. Done this. <laughs> I don't know if any of the principals would like to just say how uh, messy their buildings are, and they maybe come back in a couple weeks and say it's amazing how <laughs> <laughs> they were able to wrap it up in such a short, you know, period of time. But they really have done a good job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. Thanks. Okay. I'd like to move on then to the reports. And under reports, we have uh, the summer school 2015 highlights. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Olson and introduce the members of uh, the staff that are with you tonight to help present. I am fortunate to have a couple of our summer school staff with us tonight. And they're going to, most of our time will be them presenting to you. Um, we had, I think I passed out to all the board members a quick summary of our summer school experience over at Abe this summer. Even though we had um, a few construction pieces to work around, we had a really smooth month of summer school and uh, we finished up on July 17th as you can see there. Our enrollment numbers are listed, uh, kind of a breakdown of our remedial pieces of summer school and also our enrichment is listed here. We had a nice blend again of remedial offerings along with enrichment and I think our enrichment continues to pull in as many students as possible for our remedial, which that's not an easy thing to do for the summer because it's just hard to get families uh, into summer school, especially the remedial portion of summer school. So we had a, a good facility to work with at Abe and, and Dan O'Brien and crew, they were really helpful to us because there was a lot of a lot of things moving and shaking during summer school just as there is now without summer school going on. We had a wonderful staff and um, just worked really well together. One of our goals for summer school is to try to slow down summer slide and as much as we can because we know the research is really strong to show that summer slide is, is pretty prevalent amongst many of our 4K through 12th grade students. So uh, down below at the very bottom you can see that overall we averaged just about four points of growth in a very short month that is summer school. Um, and that again, that's in the area of literacy. So again, that, uh, those are some of our results down below. You can also see some of our enrichment offerings listed there too, along with our teachers. So again, we had a nice variety offered. This summer, we were able to try some, some new things and uh, Michael Lutz and Emily Culbertson um, really stepped forward and proposed to, uh, to different administrators some ideas that they had to try to work on some team teaching to try to engage students uh, in some different ways with within the idea of personalized learning and so just kudos to both of them for really you know thinking outside of the box and really trying some things new and summer school is a good place to do that the stakes aren't quite as high as during the school year so without further ado um, we're going to turn it over to them. I wanted to point out our parent survey results on the back of this handout too. We had really good results from our parents. Um, and our staff survey results, I didn't include those, but those are really good too. So overall, we had a good experience 
we had some, some good student progress, but really the next few minutes, I hope you can key in on some things that Emily and Michael were working on with a group of 32? Um, up to 35. Five. Okay. Up to 35 <laughs> I think students. we started at 32 and we gained were, a few more. We were more. going for 32. <laughs> we had up to 35, depending on enrollment. Sure. And so I'll let them walk you through a few more details, but hopefully this will jumpstart uh, some more ideas from this area down the road during the school year, potentially, and definitely during next summer. So take it away. I also would like to thank the administration because we felt nothing but support for yeah. you know, moving forward on, on ideas that you know, are different from what we've done in the past. And, uh, but I also think are aligned for you know, district goals for the future. Um, one of our main goals in team teaching and doing STEM was to increase student motivation, engagement, collabor and collaboration. Um, now, when thinking about motivation with summer school students, that's a pretty key topic because these are students who generally don't do as well during the school year. Um, they don't feel successful in the school system as, as much as their peers. And that's kind of an important um, note. Uh, if we're looking at this book, Blended, um, it's a book that we're reading for the uh, personalized learning uh, It's our new committee. committee. <laughs> new, new committee. Our new committee. One of the things they talk about is what do students look to school for? What is the kind of the purpose they see it serving for them? And one of the, the two main um, areas that they see it as you know they look to get out of school is um, one so that they can feel a sense of success, and accomplishment, and the other is to have fun with friends. And so we kind of tried to address that within this, especially again for those, um, you know, students who haven't felt success in the past. So why do it together as opposed to just teaching separately in our classrooms the way we've always done it? Um, we have more flexibility and we could really respond quickly to both group and individual needs, even with 35 kids in, and the space was relatively small, we were in room 28, at Abe, we weren't in the big room, so we really, we really also appreciated having that real-time collaboration. And we have so many great opportunities to collaborate, but there's nothing like being able to do it right when it's happening. Um, and we also wanted to ensure that instruction never has to stop to assess students. So we were really proud that while we were assessing our Ames Web, which is a big problem of summer school because we spend a lot of time on those individual assessments for the little little ones, um, we never had to stop teaching. Guided reading was still continuing, um, instruction was still continuing for students even though we had to, one person had to do the games well. I think teachers so often, it's like we always are like stressed out by assessment. It's not that we don't appreciate it, right. it's just that we just feel like it's detracting from instruction and we didn't have to have that issue yeah. when we were able to team teach. Um, another way to kind of, you know, bring in student um, involvement is to, you know, give them a sense of, you know, advocacy. They, they, they can then choose their, the first, we established a goal for them. And um, in the school year, we're going to have them more as part of the process, but for summer school, since there's just not a lot of time, we had to do it based off of their previous uh, data that they came in with. But they did get to choose apps and sites that were working on their goals. So they got some flexibility within what they were working on that at any given day. Um, our goals were small group instruction, um, assessment, leading guided reading groups, and helping students with goal setting and different skills specific to meeting their goals within like a one of the goals for reading, for example, was a fluency goal to have their increase their sound fluency to help them be smoother readers. So we were working directly on that skill, which we know is impactful, but we don't always get a chance to do during a regular school setting with just one teacher, because just one teacher can only spend just so much time. Hmm. Um, we try to make the most of our learning space and use flexible groups to maximize learning. So again, here you have the you know, small group instruction, and this can always be going on during these rotations. Students rotate through these centers. But then 
you can have another teacher, again, pulling uh, individuals for assessment or goal setting conferencing and uh, or bouncing over and helping out with the cooperative learning. <coughs> activities together that also work on their goals. Um, in the devices that we used, we had eight Chromebooks and eight iPads available for up to 35 students. Um, we're developing a set of sites that are linked to the presentation, but um, so if you're curious, I think we need to get it in. No, it's okay. But if they have a nice blend of websites, apps, and PDFs parents could download um, to help their students out at home. So again, trying to create that opportunity for anytime, anywhere, and a variety of choice for the students um, based on goals. And during the school year, they'll have a lot more input into what goal they're working on. So the second part of our day, um, we did a STEM extension, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. I know a lot of people know that, but we had different challenges every week. Week one, we did a programming challenge with um, the free app Scratch Junior and the Ozobots, our little robots that you can code with markers. So that's really accessible coding to kindergarten and first graders because they tell it what to do through a series of codes with markers or on the iPads. Week two, we did an engineering challenge. Um, we used marshmallows and toothpicks and challenged them to see how tall who could build the tallest structure, and of course, the geometry and the mathematics involved within that challenge is pretty significant, along with problem solving. Um, week three, we did stop motion animation, and then week four, we did bridges with both paper and popsicle sticks. Um, here, in each of these activities, students were basically lended themselves towards creativity. Students were given opportunities to use coding and programming skills to create. This is an example of a video that was developed by students in our session. He read what he uh, wrote to the group. <laughs> and again, it's simple coding, but he would then he would program his, he would choose his characters and he was able to modify them. He was able to write the speech bubbles. He was able to program how it moved, how it switched from one slide to the next. There is one other with audio, but that one does not. So thank you. There you are. There's a few more pictures of kids working together. So students also worked with partners to make decisions about their projects. So the first example was an example of a student that did a project on their own. But some of the projects involved having to collaborate and communicate with their partner. So this is an example of a stop motion animation video that was created and produced by two different students. Hey, the fire racer started. Really causes a need for them to map out 
their whole plan before they start the process. Um, so, I mean, each day um, communication was just ingrained within each of the activities. Um, all the projects, they would um, work with their partner to um, write in their journal, and then they usually journaled on the iPads. And then they'd also, at the end of each uh, unit, they'd present out to the rest of the class. So just more examples of them presenting and working together. And it was fun to use such a great variety of mediums from crayons and scissors and paper, you know, to marshmallows to the devices as well. Um, students had to solve problems and uh, meet the challenges. Each day they had to think about what worked and what didn't work um, the previous day and form a new plan for the next day. And I think that's really important. These kids had a chance to like not succeed the first day and realize, okay, what went wrong? Then the next day they came up with a new plan. What did they see that worked well with their friends? And you know, what's their new idea that they came up with together? And in every case, almost everybody failed the first day. But by That's the good. end of the uh, you know, week, almost it pretty much everybody succeeded. And so just to get that you know, feedback cycle is, is really important. So we're having fun with friends, like we said, experiencing success, excuse me. One of the reasons students loved the session was that it so clearly addressed what students want out of their learning time. With the help of their partner, they had success completing their challenges. So as you can see, Michael and Emily worked together for a win, the first two hours team teaching. Then this was the third hour of the morning, STEM, which was the enrichment portion of their morning. And again, they continued that team teaching. One, one of the kids in that class was my youngest one, and you know I got, I got a really neat sense from her of how much she enjoyed it, how engaged she was, how much she learned. Um, so it was really neat for me personally to have a child in, in their room. And um, you know, when you think about the, the, the collaboration, the critical thinking, all the 21st century skills that we want our kids to be developing, this was really a great example of that, all those, all those different things. So. Are we able to carry this through into the quote school year because I, I agree with you there is nothing that teaches a child better than peer collaboration with facilitation and oversight and that they learn failure is good mm -hmm. because you are able then communally collectively to assess what worked what didn't work what did you see what did I see not right, not wrong, we see differently, but it combines to make uh, the goal achievable. And that's what we're asking of all of our 21st century learners in business, in manufacturing, in production, in family. It is a collaborative engagement that is most uh, uh, important that I would love to see how we as a board and how we as a district can begin integrating these um, across the board. We are getting plenty of support from the administration. Um, I went to Molly the, um, during summer school <coughs> saying, I would, you know, Emily and I would love to continue this into the school year. How can this happen? And uh, she's like, well, there's an opening over at Abe in kindergarten. And so that's why um, the shift was made where I'm heading over to Abe um, to teach kindergarten there. Um, so that, per your approval, we would be then teaching not this coming year, but the following year as a team, as a collaborative team. We also mm -hmm. hope to do a little bit of uh, work with STEM on uh, mm -hmm. this coming up school year. Um, as you know, uh, his, our first graders will come on over in the kindergarten classroom and mm -hmm. we'll be working on some STEM um, towards the end of the day. So, yes. so you're, the, you're, you're, <coughs> you're the pilgrims. <laughs> you're the pilot project. Yeah. Obviously, a few things have to be worked yes. out. Yeah, it's there's, a lot. Lot. <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There's always a caveat, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. 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 The, well, the groundwork is being laid. Yep, absolutely. Do you have questions for yeah, the question, Michael or me? Yeah, I, the question I have is, you know, obviously this, this stuff sounds great, and, and sometimes things like this can be done in the summer. Um, one of the things that we're always fighting for, it seems like, is space. Um, and I mean, I'm saying, you know what, because a lot of times when we hear 30 kindergartens and 
first graders in their room, and it's like, oh no, but it can work in the summer. Um, is some of the problems that we might have right now, if we'd say, okay, we want to do this, and maybe even do it in other classrooms, could it, that be? Could we have space considerations to do that? Well, I think space is a huge, huge um, part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, the reason Abe is they have a very large kindergarten room, and that's a place where it could happen. We, we, we hope that, you know, that, that would be the plan. We, um, we would have placed it there this summer, but we needed that room for an office because it was one of the few rooms that had an outside door. Sure. So we could welcome parents in at the back side of the school yeah. through there. So, but really that would have been a much more ideal space for Michael and Emily. Well, yeah, you know, they're going out. Abe, you're looking at East. Uh, kindergarten, you're looking at a few spaces in the, in the district where that is really possible. Okay, happen. but that's something that we could look at if we say hey, this is a workable and there is there is options on the and successful model. There may be other things that we need to do. There would be a lot of things to look at. Space would be one, you know, our overall, you know, our our programming. Does how does this mesh with everything else that we're working on? What about our staffing? You know, there's a lot of lot of pieces to be considered for sure. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's something that we need to have the administrators and the teachers and everybody just to continue to look at and work at uh, and, and not to, to say, you know, this is successful, but there are barriers here that are keeping us from doing this. Mm -hmm. Tell us what those barriers are, mm -hmm. and then that's what we need to come forward as a board and, and even maybe even to the community and say, this is what we need to help our students pre-K all the way through 12th grade be as successful as possible. So I thank you for your work. I would like to see, um, if you can get the thing to Chris and you can get it to us, I'd like to see those links of, of what you were working on. It sounds yeah. like yeah, a really a work cool. in progress. Yeah, he has. I can forward it to you. Yeah, yeah that'll it's be a work good. in progress, but something we're planning on building on this next year. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'm going to share with you some information on the high school and middle school summer school. And I'm her cheerleader. <laughs> I'm a teacher at the high school, and I need to thank Glenn and Lori for allowing me the opportunity to help out with summer school this year. Um, so the courses that we offered at the high school for credit recovery, credit recovery, we had English and math, and then we had various online courses as well that students could get for new credit. Um, we also did have social studies as well. Only a handful of students were in social studies. At the middle school, they had English and math that they were working on. So here's a list of the teachers that we had for summer school. We had Jordan Patan, um, John Taylor, Jacob Bull, Rita Ehlert, Maggie Schumacher, and Megan Bauer. Um, and they helped our students work and be successful. So it was broken down into two sessions. First session would be from 8 to 9.42, then they'd get about a five minute break. And then session two would be 9.47 to 11.30. Now in session one and two for the middle school, a lot of students would go from then their language arts English then to their math or vice versa. And that kind of worked that way. We, for English at the high school, we could have students there for session one and session two for English. And the same with math, it just depended upon what they needed. Social studies was only offered for the first session. So total, including online students and everybody, we had 116 students for the high school and for middle school. Um, this is just a breakdown of the middle school um, courses that were offered. So we had a very, very small number of students in world history and history of the Holocaust. Um, and those were online courses that they took at home. They were not actually in our building. Interrupt if I'm incorrect. Oh, you're good. Okay. So then we had our math and literacy, and those were the students that actually were here in the building. 
So high school, summer school. So here is a list of all of the courses that kids could be taking. Um, you're gonna see some of our larger would be our English A, English B, and then math, so you'd have algebra, so S1 would mean semester one, S2, semester two, um, geometry one and two, semester one, semester two. So these are just some of the courses that were here at the high school. You wanna go back a slide? Yeah. Two things that might stick out as kind of odd, um, the math six and 700, um, those were math courses that were um, for special ed students who may not have the algebra one skills. So working with John Taylor, who was our special ed teacher, we selected those courses based on uh, student achievement levels. And then Math A um, was a half credit that students could earn if they were here the entire duration of summer school, completed all of the work components, but did not pass the final exam. So if a student in Algebra one did not master enough of the material to pass the exam, we still awarded them a half credit for math, but they would need to retake algebra because they don't have that skill set yet. So here's just a breakdown of the high school students that were online and then versus just those that were in-house at the school. <laughs> what were the numbers again for high school? High school? Overall. Overall would be 71. Okay. And then 51, I think, were actually here in-house. Okay. So here's a breakdown of the courses that were offered online. You can see I taught personal finance. I had six kids, so I led the way. <laughs> um, so this is just, you know, the courses okay. that we were offering online. Um, so taking a look at math credit recovery, I was interested to see you know, where kids were coming in for needing math assistance and what credit they needed to recovery. So you can see Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. If the students took, uh, received the half credit for Math A when they retake Algebra and are successful in... They earn... They earn the other half? No, they earn their Algebra credit. Okay. A full credit. Well, it depends, so broken, it depends on what semester they needed. So a student might have passed semester one of algebra and then failed semester two, so then they only need semester two of algebra. So it's not like they have to start all over from the beginning. So this is just taking a look at English or credit recovery um, because there'd be English A, English B, just breaking it down, taking a look that way. Um, taking a look at math and English to see. I'm big into charts, can you tell? <laughs> I like to take a look at that data. <laughs> You'll have to give us a, a translation of what you're seeing. What are the, what are the high points? Those, are, those are helpful. English. Those are helpful. Yeah, we need to help our kiddos. Um, so 51 students passed their math and English credit recovery, meaning they earned that credit for the course in which what semester they failed. 25 students completed and passed their online courses. And then, this is the huge one, the students that needed to take courses to graduate, so seniors, 100%, I will tell you it was two for two. I mean, we only had two, but still, that's 100%. So we were able to get them the courses and the requirements that they needed to graduate. So, I mean, that was huge for them. And that's what I have for you. You guys have any questions? I no pictures. Sorry, I didn't think the kids would want their pictures taken. <laughs> did we have? I mean, do we know the numbers of students that you know we say were two for two, but there? There was only two that needed. But there were there weren't others that needed. Other seniors, no. Okay. No, we only had two. Okay. That needed to fill some courses. There could be some students coming back in the fall, the fall. though that would have needed more than what they could have. Um, recovered during summer school. How many, Glenn? I wouldn't have the exact numbers on that, but I could get it for you. So the, the online students, or the online courses that were taken by the middle school students, those were not required courses, is that correct? Correct, they were enrichment courses. So those students um, signed up because they had an interest and we had teachers to uh, work through those courses. Are they, ad are they like, uh, kind of like advanced? Or like just an accelerated. Are they accelerated? 
Well, they're accelerated in time because they've only got the four weeks. Right. Um, I would say I'm the two that did the history of the Holocaust, their rationale for taking it was because they would be attending the um, field trip in 2016 to Europe. Okay. And so um, we thought that it would be to their benefit to partake in that class as a background to get them prepared. Okay. Uh, can I ask a clarifying question too, and I'm not sure, Glenn or Marcy, just that um, I think in what I understand too is that the numbers of kids who took summer school classes and recovered their credits and passed was greater and the percentage was higher by a great deal than last year. Or that there was a, 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 a like a significant, and not even that it was greater than last year, but that a significant number of kids. Um, I don't know the numbers for last year, but they were really high. Yeah, it was a nice, this year was nice really improvement high. with with the, those numbers this year. Yeah, I so can't. Lots to celebrate with. How yeah, how how it was done last year, but I mean, we had that English teacher here in house, so they're receiving face to face instruction as well as math. As we had a teacher here in house, so not only were they doing components online, but they were able to get that face-to-face -face instruction or assistance if needed. Yeah, and I would say that it was truly a blended space for mm -hmm. both English and math. Um, there were some requests for credit recovery at home, and you know we really stressed to parents that the purpose of the credit recovery face-to-face -face is to make sure that um, the students were really supported with that teacher and we didn't feel at home was the proper environment for that. So, um, and I think that you know, kudos to Jordan and Rita for the work that they did. Um, you know, they they looked at what was done last year. You know, they took ownership and made changes how you know fit their teaching style, um, and they really did a nice job working with students to help them to gain the skills necessary to, to pass and to move mm -hmm. forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brings us then to B under reports, <coughs> construction summary up update. Jen Mason from CG Schmidt. Hi, Sean. I do PowerPoint. Is it going to be as good as that picture? Or? That stem stuff's amazing. Wish I had that 12 years earlier. Yeah. yeah. I have a master's in engineering now, but I w wish I would have thought about it a lot earlier. <laughs> I didn't start thinking about it until I was about 19. You got to be teaching, Jen. Mm -hmm. You got to be teaching. Got to be teaching? You got to be teaching. Maybe. Teach these girls. I got one. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You're. <laughs> Your support staff. <laughs> That's the water main break at East. <laughs> no, don't say that. Don't jinx. <laughs> 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 All right, so what's, what's going right on right now is pretty much similar in all the schools. <laughs> and that we're doing finishes. So if you peek in the window, uh, if you're at Baraboo High School, you'll see in the front office, you'll see that we put glazing up. So all the doors are going in, everything is getting painted, and that's happening at all the schools right now. Uh, so Jack Young's painted, Wilson's painted, West is painted. Freedom should be painted, but it's mostly masonry. East is being painted, so you'll see a lot of pops of color everywhere. The library, uh, I know I always talk about the IMC, but it was pretty exciting because all the glazing's in. So on the south elevation was the last, we worked around the north side, working to the south, so all the glazing's in. It allows us to enclose and let us continue with the finishes. So we painted the first coat, so it's primed as of this weekend. And then we're gonna start putting pops of color in there. And then that, all the flooring was delivered on Friday, so all the flooring starts at all of the schools this week. What else do you want? Pavement, I mean the pavement's obvious mm -hmm. at Baraboo High School. Uh, we also, so we finished the paving there, we're waiting 14 days to strike, but we have opened it for registration, but limited. Like, I won't even park on it today. I just, I can't do it. It's, I, I can't park on a finished uh, surface, so I'll probably never drive in that parking lot. 
Uh, and then we also shaped Al Beerman or South. We shaped that parking lot that will be paved later this week. And then um, Jack Young was seal coated, and seal coating is just a typical preventative maintenance. Uh, it, you do seal coating over time when you're not going to do a complete overhaul, so it doesn't get oxidized by the sun, so it doesn't turn white, it doesn't fade, it doesn't crumble, it doesn't crack, and it makes it a lot stronger, just extends the life of it, and it looks better overall. Jen, do, they, do you crack fill before you? Did yeah, they did do crack fill, and they spent about two days doing that, and then they seal coated it. And so again, we're waiting 14 days if we can. The last one to be paved will be east. And we're actually considering paving the basketball court, which wasn't shown to be done, but it's in bad shape and right next to all the new pavement. I think it'd be money well spent. We have contingency money for that. It'll be money well spent, I think, to consider redoing the whole thing. It's okay. <laughs> and then what else you'll see if you look around like GLW, um, you'll, in those classrooms you'll see all the typical unit vents, which have been a real thorn on my side. Um, you would think that just a piece of equipment, um, I'm trying to see if there's any in this room, you would think a piece of equipment wouldn't be such a big deal, but that has been such a saga all summer long. So it's coming to an end. I'm feeling kind of crazy on one end and kind of sad on the other end to see it coming to an end because I'm going to miss it a whole lot. Um, but I'm going to happy to see it on. And what we said earlier, this the staff here has been phenomenal. Incredibly patient, incredibly informative, helpful, just cooperative. It's been fantastic. I really appreciate it. And the last construction tour, is Monday, so next Monday at 5.30, meet at East. Now right now we're in the, kind of the elf phase, we call it, where it seems like it's very magical, where people come through at this last tour, it's a there's no way, you're never gonna get done, you're never gonna get done, and it happens on every project, and then magically, like elves, um, everything gets done, and everything's turned over like it should be. And then I go into a coma for about three days. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I have, do you guys, it's all right. Do you guys have anything, any questions for me? Andres, concerns? They'll save them for Monday, 5.30 at least. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you guys, everyone. Thank you, too. Brings us to personnel recommendations. <clears throat> First up, we have a couple of, of resignations to approve. Brian Barron from East is a first grade teacher, and Dustin White Eagle from Baraboo High School Special Education. I would entertain a motion for the acceptance of both of those resignations. A move. Second. Motion by Mortimer. Seconded by Miriam. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Under the approval of new hires, we do not have a special education teacher recommendation for the Jack Young Middle School. So thus, I would entertain a motion for the approval of number one, two, and three, East Elementary Kindergarten and Carpenter, East Elementary First Grade, Amanda Sasia and North Freedom Elementary Kindergarten, Megan McCall. Entertaining motion for those new hires. So moved. Second. Motion by Vedro, seconded by Riley. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Brings us then to the 2015-16 academic and athletic co-curricular schedules. There is a second to add under number one. That is for the girls Hockey varsity <laughs> position, Rick Kapner. So that would be the second. So we have two. Um, the girls softball varsity assistant, which is paid for by the Booster Club, and then the girls hockey varsity coach. I would entertain a motion for the approval of those schedules. So moved. Second. Motion by Bedro. Second by McNevin, I believe. Yep. Any discussion? Who yep. pays for the girls hockey coach? Paid for by Booster Club too, <coughs> but no. The um, girls' hockey program is largely self self funded. All the costs get split. We we co op with depends on the year five schools, six schools, add up all the costs and determine the per pupil fee that we charge at the start of the year, and then whatever whatever shortage there is, uh, the Booster Club picks up the difference. As far as the payment, though, the Baraboo School District makes the payment and collects from the others. They don't get a check from Correct. five different right. schools. Correct. Right. They're our employee. We, right. They're on our, they, we, do, we do all the paperwork with them. We hire them and all that. So that's basically paid for from the Booster Club also. Correct. Basically. Booster Club and student fees, yeah. Okay, Further discussion? Yeah. When was the last time we took a look at co-curricular reimbursement? I mean, it's, I don't know if I've 
never seen it come across this board. Uh, I mean, did we do that last yeah, year? Yeah, we did that last, last year. year. Last year. We did middle school last year. We kind of looked at, and we did that more, that was more internally, you know, we balanced. Right. There, there were different stipends for, diff, you know, there was a head seventh grade coach and an assistant, and we said, you know, really the work load was all the same. So in, we looked at it from an internal perspective, but just with middle school, we kind of balanced out, you know, what, what the stipend should be. But we haven't compared, in the two years I've been here, we haven't compared our high school salaries versus the Badger Conference, for example. Well, I think it. I think that's an important review, <coughs> just to make sure that that we let our coaching staff know that we're interested in being competitive. I mean, we're never going to lead the pack. We're never going to be the, the top compensators, but but I watched some varsity sports come along, and they show up, and they've got a head coach, an assistant coach, and somebody holding the clipboard, and they've got they've got a whole cadre of of people, and we've got one person standing there, and it's like, wait a minute, this this person needs support other than just you know on the court but also in managing each of these programs mm -hmm. um, you know I think it I think it might be an interesting time to review and, and see where we stand wouldn't be that difficult to do not, not only dollar wise but, but personnel wise right and to me that you know as I've heard from our coaches I think that's a bigger the number of coaches slash assistants is, is probably the bigger concern with coaches they all know it you know like you said the dollar amount they get paid isn't in some well, respects, doesn't matter too much, but well, it's nobody's doing it for the money, it, right? But, well, but the, if somebody else has, yeah, they have a paid varsity assistant, and and we don't, you know, then just being able to teach and instruct in you know, our mm -hmm. students is, you know, we're at we're at a disadvantage in that way. I mean, it, it seems like it as as co curriculars are evolving, not just all sports, but it seems like there's more communication required, more, more. Organization required there. It's no longer the X and O's, X's and O's on the court. I mean, that's that's almost becoming secondary to the amount of effort it takes to run a program and get get feeder programs running and get an elementary ball set up and get you know coordinating with the school with the city to make sure that you get kids interested. I mean, it's a lot of work, mm -hmm. and that that takes a lot of people. Yeah, I'd be happy to do a survey like that. Thank you. I'd appreciate that. Anything further discussion on? <coughs> Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Brings us to new business. First up is the approval of receipts and disbursements. Chair of Finance, Mr. McNevin. Moved to approve. Second. Any motion by McNevin, seconded by Cummings. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Brings us to B. The approval of the revised Flambeau naming agreement, uh, which is the contractual obligation between the district and the Sally Family Foundation. Move to approve. All second. Motion by McNevin, seconded by Mearing. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carried brings us to entertaining a motion oh, to adjourn. Wait, and, and we have four other slots open for the your project, correct? And how many of those slots have been sold out? So we sold them all. Yeah, we sold all four of them. Good for you. Uh, the wrap itself should go up sometime next week and be ready for the first game. So. Good Who for are you. the four? Can you tell us now? Uh, sure. Uh, Don Larson, Don Rick, Baraboo National Bank, and St. Clair Hospital. All right. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Good for the race. Awesome job. Is <laughs> the, the bleachers and everything, be, would they be going to be here in time for the well, when we want them, at the yep. is the target date still the Reedsburg game? Is that the target date? Yep, yep. September 18th. Well, I guess I'd like to thank those four organizations with Flambeau, mm -hmm. Don Larson, Don Rick, St. Clair, and River National. That's a very generous step forward for those five organizations. Absolutely. Yep. But you, you still could. Still could. Masonry, we've got coming in for. Uh, no room left now. Uh, we'll find you a spot. There's bleachers, seat, engraving seats yet. You can sponsor the dome going over it all. <laughs> Dead dome. Thanks, Jeff and Jenny. <laughs> Good job. Entertaining motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed?